For generations, car ownership has been welcomed as a liberation from local experience and an expression of personal identity. But today, another technology has taken its place at the center of our lives. Not a transportation tool, but a communications device. Embedded with GPS, sensors, and computing power, the smartphone can render an array of transportation choices into a fluid, on-demand network. The same is true for the things we buy, where just-in-time logistics, same-day delivery, and door-to-door transport are now possible for an infinite variety of goods. Car sharing, delivery services, city transit apps, all of these are just glimpses of an emerging marketplace for digitally connected mobility services. What we see happening now is that ecology coming together and the formation of something called the new mobility industry. And this industry brings together the small businesses, the big businesses, and a whole array of industries. And it says, this is the next information revolution. Not one technology, but several technologies are converging along with an enablement of a different kind of business model for mobility, where now you don't necessarily have to buy and own a car personally in order to get that spontaneous, responsive, go anywhere, anytime kind of freedom that comes with owning a car. We have the roadmap. It's the technology that's disrupting and changing the way we apply the solutions. We're at the dawn of a transformational shift where all services are subscribed to and all experiences can be attained through a smartphone or through some future device that's yet to be designed, whether it's the watch or the armband or whatever it is. And that's what's really exciting because what that does now is it creates that layer of abstraction from reaching for your car keys to get into a, a car to summoning a trip and seeing what the options are. And what that does is it creates an opportunity right now to link public transport, which is what we call scheduled mobility, things that come by a schedule, with on-demand transport, whether it's your feet, your own bicycle, a bike share, a car share, a ride share service, or the on-demand taxi services like Uber, Lyft. Those things need to be integrated as a package so that the customer can feel like they're reliable. So thinking of it as a network and not simply another mode of transit. These information systems can go a long way towards reintegrating transportation in an urbanizing world. Starting with crucial transit points between roads, trains, streetcars, buses, and bikeways, we can weave together much of the infrastructure that already exists. But making it all work seamlessly demands new forms of collaboration across different modes, services, technologies, and infrastructures. It's scale that matters. You have enough nodes in your bike share system or your car share system, then suddenly it's like instant transportation. This system will break down in places where you don't have that kind of reliable demand at all times and ubiquitously throughout an area. It's adapted to mass participation. Cost, convenience, and connectivity. Identifying where the open gaps lie among these three is what is going to start to give us where the opportunities lie. How does access to transportation and mobility services become better than owning a car. This is a generational shift. Our younger adults are not aspiring to have cars. Our cities are going to be less car dominated. We're going to create space in our cities that our communities should take now. The mindsets of how we get from place to place, uh, how we uh, relate to one another in terms of sharing things, sharing vehicles, sharing bicycles, uh, sharing spaces. Uh, this is going to, in, in many ways, reinvent cities, reinvent life for people. And the mere fact that we can bring mobility to more people is in itself a huge economic opportunity. Already a number of cities are leading the way in 21st century mobility. In Stockholm, congestion pricing has reduced car traffic entering the city by 20%. In Singapore, a single app now combines transport by train, bus, taxi, car sharing, and bikes under one monthly subscription. And in Barcelona, an advanced simulator uses real traffic data and demand patterns to give detailed predictions of the effects of proposed 
mobility projects. One of its first tests showed that a fleet of on-demand shuttles could significantly reduce private vehicle traffic and pollution levels throughout the city. We've been doing a lot of work in China over the last 10 years, and we've watched them transform themselves from an old paradigm of isolated super blocks with single uses into a rebirth of the idea of transit oriented development, mixed use, human scale blocks, walkability, bringing back the bicycles that were completely lost and destroyed as a mode. I've been focused on retrofitting our streets for people versus a particular mode of transportation. We're building a new river walk, a hundred million dollar river walk, We're building the largest elevated trail in the world for people. 2.7 miles of elevated trail that was an old abandoned rail line through four neighborhoods. And so you have some of those successes and people are willing to gamble with larger dollars. Even buses, often notoriously inconvenient, are being revived with the help of digital technologies. Thanks to a complete redesign of the bus network in Houston, Texas, more than 80% of the city's population now lives within walking distance of a bus stop. And in Bogota, Colombia, a now long-standing bus rapid transit system moves more passengers than many of the world's subway systems at just a fraction of the cost. There was a real transformation in the Bogota area where a lot of people who were of lower income saw their circumstances improve significantly. So you have these really interesting ways of building on what's there in an elegant and cost-effective way. How do you incentivize people to make the right choices? And you make a 10% mode shift in a city through behavioral change? That could be a billion dollar plus benefit to the economy. Saying I want to drive less is a good goal, but it's a very abstract goal. But if we can start to assign specific parameters to it, that helps people start to shift their mental models little by little so that gradually they can get to their ultimate goal of actually driving much less. Having that awareness is the first step because when we recognize a problem, that's when our motivation to change starts to become much more effective, much more impactful. We already have a kind of rising tide of awareness, but it has not crossed over into the consciousness of the general public. And uh, I think that is our biggest challenge, is simply uh, kind of breaking through uh, what still remains a big population of early adopters and moving to uh, uh, the broader population. Because these are a set of services that literally everybody can use. The digital technologies of today only hint at our future options. These emerging services and solutions are together becoming a new kind of platform for experiences, businesses, and transport systems we have yet to imagine. What we now view through a smartphone is only a glimpse of our new transportation landscape. I touch the earth, but never the ground. My football makes no sound. Light the flame, light the fire, keys in my hand. Ready to burn it down. I ride the fire, ride the flame, move so fast. I have